Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Arirang News Break on this Friday, May 6th. I'm Han Dan in Seoul. North Korea's ruling Workers' Party Congress, a rare large-scale gathering in the Hermit Kingdom South Korea has been watching out for, has just kicked off under the watchful eye of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. This is the first highest-level meeting convened in the North in 36 years, and the message delivered by Kim will likely signal the path North Korea will take in the coming years. For the latest, we connect to Connie Kim at the Unification Ministry in Seoul. Connie, what do we know so far? Well, Han, the ruling Workers' Party Congress kicked off about half an hour ago with Kim Jong-un expected to announce the opening of the massive political event with a speech. The Congress is not being streamed live, but his speech is expected to set the outline of the once-in-a-generation gathering. The event is forecast to be held for three to four days, so it'll either wrap up on Sunday or Monday. And during that time, the party will list its accomplishments, elect new younger aides to Kim Jong-un, and give the young leader a new title to cement his grip on power. The convention was last held in 1980 by Kim's grandfather and the founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung. Back then, it was attended by 117 foreign guests from more than 100 countries. But facing international sanctions following its nuclear and long-range missile tests, no high-profile foreign guests are known to have been invited. As a result, Pyongyang seems to be doing its best to whip up a celebratory atmosphere within the regime. A huge Workers' Party flag is reportedly at the April 25th House of Culture, the venue of the opening ceremony, and some 3,000 party members have finished their rehearsals. This rarest of rare events is definitely a huge political gathering, and we'll have to see how Kim Jong-un goes about cementing his status and charting a vision for the future. I'll bring you more updates at noon, Korea time. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Connie, for that. Keep us posted throughout the day. And with North Korea's ruling Workers' Party Congress kicking off, the possibility of Pyongyang conducting a fifth nuclear test appears to have been delayed until after the event. Amid North Korea's series of ballistic missile tests and increased activities around its main nuclear test site, many had speculated that another nuclear test may happen prior to the Congress. Some experts now point out the reclusive regime is likely to put its focus solely on its Congress for the time being, as the regime is feeling increased pressure from the international community, especially from its longtime ally, China. The South Korean government is not ruling out chances of another test anytime, though, as Kim Jong-un's moves are more unpredictable than those of his predecessors. It's day two of Korea's four-day golden holiday weekend in Korea. The weather isn't the best, but expressways out of Seoul are becoming increasingly congested as families enjoy a rare chance to recharge their batteries. Oh Young for us this morning. It might be a damp and dreary morning, but many Koreans are out and about and on the road to make most of their four-day weekend. In a bid to drive up domestic consumption, the government designated Friday as an extra public holiday as it was sandwiched between Children's Day and the weekend. To encourage the public to take trips, tour fees across expressways have been waived and entrance fees to museums, palaces and other tourist hotspots have been slashed to zero. Korea's police agency estimates more than 5 million vehicles will be moving across the nation on Friday. Traffic is already building up on expressways out of Seoul and across major cities in Gyeonggi-do province, which surrounds the capital. The Gyeongbu Expressway, leading to the southern port city of Busan, is currently heavily congested, as is the Seoyan Expressway in the direction of Mokpo in the southwest. Traffic congestion is expected to peak around noon across the country. To keep the roads running safe and sound, Korea's police agency says it will step up efforts to monitor traffic on major highways and around tourist destinations. They'll crack down on drunk driving by setting up more random checkpoints in busy areas and also use helicopters to catch drivers violating traffic laws, like driving in bus lanes. For those venturing out throughout the day, the country's weather agency says the rain will stop in the afternoon, but warns that there will be high levels of fine dust. Oh Arirang News. 
South Korea, Japan, Indonesia, and Taiwan. These four Asian countries are expected to lower their benchmark interest rates by the end of the year, according to Oxford Economics. The British-based analyst predicted that the Bank of Korea will lower the rate by 25 basis points from the current record low of 1.5 percent by year's end. It forecasts Taiwan will cut 12.5 basis points, Indonesia 25, and Japan in particular will lower up to 40 basis points. Oxford economics said other Asian economies will not lower their interest rates as they are wary of liabilities and instability in the financial markets. Noting that China has so far cut 125 basis points since 2015, it forecast that Beijing will reveal other monetary easing measures instead of rate cuts. Russian musicians have been staging a concert in the ruins of the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra to celebrate its recapture from Islamic State militants. Renowned conductor Valery Gergiev, a supporter of Russia's President Vladimir Putin, conducted the Marinsky Symphony Orchestra from St. Petersburg at Palmyra's Roman Theater. The crowd was mainly Russian soldiers, government ministers, and journalists. Gergiev said the concert is a protest against the barbarism exhibited by ISIS, who had used the city's Roman amphitheater to execute prisoners. And that's all for now from all of us here at Arirang. Thank you for watching.